Hello everybody, welcome to Tom's Tips. And today I'm going to try and explain why not all central heating is piped up in the same way. And this because central heating has evolved. Uh, the early beginnings, I don't know when the early beginnings was, but uh, I started doing central heating in the late 60s, early 70s. And in those days, we'd go and buy a boiler, uh, the radiators and the pipe were just to come together and we didn't really know what was going on. The early, the early systems didn't have a, well they had a pump, but they didn't have any valves or motorised valves. Uh, you know, so the arrangements were changing and as we were putting these valves on, things were happening that we didn't understand and nobody knew, nobody had written any rules down then. I think Honeywell was the first people who made valves and they started realising that a lot of the valves were going back and it wasn't the valves that was at fault, it was the plumbers that didn't know uh, how to pipe them up properly. And so it evolved that we all had to go for, back for lessons. Right, so but the better than the lessons, we've learned through the, the trade evolving and experience on what's happening and finding out why it's happening and adjusting things to um, to make them work properly. So this is why you'll very often go into a house and you'll look at the tank and you'll think, well, oh, why? Why is it done like that? So I'm going to try and explain a few things like that today. Here we have a very early Bourbon's central heating system. where you've got the boiler, the boiler heats the water and it works through gravity. Uh, as the water gets hot, it moves upwards as it gets lighter and it, it can't go that way so it, because it needs a circuit, so it goes through the cylinder, the cylinder takes it back to the boiler and um, that's that's it's a basic system and on the central heating is pumped, you've got to pump on the central heating to make that work around the rads because it wouldn't it wouldn't go down the downstairs through gravity, it might go upstairs but it's only a mind it wouldn't do in every situation but it needs a pump to circulate it and usually that pump would be on uh, the return. Uh, the boiler would have its own separate coal feed and vent system. So you'd have four tappings off the boiler, four pipes off the boiler, you'd have flow and return to the heating and flow and return to the water. And uh, it's the Bourbon's basic central heating system that would, you know, you'd put in in the 60s. People hadn't yet invented the valve, or if they had been invented, it wasn't um, it, it wasn't commonly used. And because that pump had the same circuit all the time, it wouldn't that circuit would never shut down with a thump as the heating went off and the water gone. So it was going round at a constant pressure all the time. It wouldn't over pump. So this is the first stage uh, involvement of the central heating, where we've got a boiler, we've got a pump and we've got a valve. Uh, so what's happening now is that the, the water heats up in the boiler and a pump takes it round. Now the problem is what was happening now is we found that when the valve shuts down and the central heating goes off we've shortened the circuit so the pump's going through the cylinder and back to the boiler but it's only got now a short circuit where it had a long circuit before. And this causes problems uh, with over over pumping into the tank, and this will make like another radiator in your attic. There'll be steam coming out of here, and it, it was nice and warm in the attic. So that that was no good. So one people started wondering why has that happened. Well, we found out why it's happened, but how did we stop it? Nobody knew how to stop it. So that's when we started looking at other ways of putting the tank in, other ways of piping it up. Okay so this is one thing that the, the boiler recommended, the boiler manufacturers recommended that we're doing and made a, a combined uh, feed and vent. So this is as well as feeding your boiler this is a vent and any expansion would take place in the tank without blowing it over and, and that worked good for in some systems. Other manufacturers would recommend the same thing, a combined feed and vent, but one over the top, just in case 
the thermostat on the boiler went uh, gone wrong and the boiler started dancing it, it gave it an escape another attempt of stopping that happening is you'd see one of these in the cylinder cupboard and it's called an air separator or an air jack we used to call them and what happens there is you, you feed from your boiler comes in in there that's your vent that's your flow going out and this is your cold feed and that was supposed to stop over pump which it didn't always work it all depends on how high your tank was and where that was put so I think that was one of the early uh, snake oil treatments you know because you pay a lot of money for these you pay about 20 quid for one of them I think at the time they've gone a bit cheaper since because nobody uses them we can do just as good a job I think with the um, with arranging the pipes better and for my money uh, this was the best way to do it this is what we called the H system so your boiler is coming from this side this will be a flow from your boiler and then you take it up to this H thing there so you go across then and this would be your expansion this would be your coal feed coming from your tank where you'd, have a, you'd normally have a gate valve there to stop the coal feed coming in if you was working somewhere that would be expansion which uh, you would go over the tank with that uh, now your pump pointing down and this would be you'd find this as low down in the cylinder cupboard as is practical because you've got to remember you've got to get this valve on uh, just about where you before you hit the floor and then this will be your rads going to your rads so, so the floor would be about here so that you'd disappear under the floor and then that would go to the cylinder and that would stop it over over pumping or they said it would I don't think that worked every time either but I think that was the best method so there are a few methods that I know of stopping the air going up to the tank although it's not foolproof because the problem you have is you've got a long circuit and a short circuit uh, with today's pumps which are called smart pumps I don't know how smart they are, they're smarter than me but they can, they can, um, they can sense the resistance in the pipes and they know when you've gone from a short circuit to a long circuit and they adjust accordingly that's why they call them smart and that does away with a lot of this uh, over pumping because another reason for mobile pumping or another reason for them collecting air is not the actual air that's in going into the pipes it's cavitation from the pump because think of it like this if you're going on a rowing boat to get the, the, the boat going through the water you've got to pull very hard and very long but slowly until you get going and then you can go faster because the water won't shift all that easy and that's why the reason of it, you see you've got a pump with just one speed and it's trying to go and it can't so it cavitates and that cavitate it causes uh, bubbles of As for pouring additives in central heating well I don't know I don't want to comment, I'll comment on that one um, I'll leave you to judge on that to me the sign is stuff you don't need you know what a lot will disagree so we'll just agree to disagree on that one don't buy it fair liquid put some of that in 